And now we're going to tie a flat stone clinger nymph, that group of mayflies known as heptagenids, the heptagenidae. This family of nymphs, historically through fly tying, has been probably the most neglected of all. However, for people that fish on freestone streams, it can be the most prevalent mayfly in the river. Uh, and certainly on the rivers that we've just been fishing, they're under every stone, the riverbed is heaving with them. So it is a very, very important group of insects. Most people in the past have just made do with tying a, a sort of a flattened gold ribbed hairs here and making it quite shaggy and putting long tails on. But they've missed the profile by a mile. So I'm going to show you now how to tie one of these that captures the silhouette of the fly and uh, the fly itself has given me loads and loads of magic moments nymphing. So it is a very, very deadly pattern. I'm tying this on a size 12 hook. First thing to do is get my tying thread on. Snip off the waist. And now take this dark brown raffine, take off a piece about two inches long. Open this out, it'll open out to about an inch wide, or an inch and a bit, and then fold it just as though you're rolling a, a roll up cigarette. Just fold it, crease it. In my book, I just put in one thickness, but I found that it's better, it's a more reinforced, robust fly if you double it. Cut off now a piece about 3 16 wide, 4 mil wide, say. So there's your piece of a folded raffine. Moisten one end, lay it over the top, sit it on top of the shank, keep it central and just pinch in the sides. Then come round with the tying thread, soft wrap and pinch down. And then keep flattening it with your finger and thumb like that. So you're tightening that in until this raffine is secured right up to the back of the eye. And then just come forward and tie down the waist. The important thing to look at now is that this piece of raffine has to be central. Bring your tying thread back to within about a millimetre of the, the eye. Take some 20 pound black amnesia shooting head mono. It doesn't have to be that, but it's just any, any sort of 20 to 25 pounds breaking strain mono. It doesn't even have to be black. And just take off about three quarters to an inch. And then what I do now, I just nip it in my teeth to give you a little flat tiny in spot. Lay this across the shank and tie it down right where you've made that little flattened spot. Once you've got it tied in, swing it back square, just support it with your thumb and drop some thread wraps over. Figure of eight fashion now consolidate it and make it nice and firm and don't be happy and satisfied with it unless it's absolutely at right angles to the shank take your scissors now and snip off these strands to about four or five millimeters long now what you do is you pick up your cigarette lighter hold the raffine out of the way hold the thread out of the way Make sure that the light is steady and you go in and just melt one edge. And then just as it's set in, just press there lightly with a wetted finger just to mushroom the end. If you've gone too far, all is not lost. You just simply shunt that over a tad. Remember though, when you're doing this, do not on any account press this molten nylon with a dry finger. If you do, 
you're going to have a little tiny blister and it'll be as painful as anything. So you finish up with, if you like, what some people might refer to as a couple of heat balled eyes out on stalks and the stalks are about uh, in new money about a millimetre and a half long. I'm doing that so that I've got a little stump as a foundation round which to figure of eight my tine thread and this is going to give me my broad disc like head. Bring my tine thread all the way down to the end of the shank and I tie my tails in. And again for tails I'm using badger hair, dyed badger hair, take out three nice long fibres, complete with the tips. Even these up so that they are more or less all in line. Once you've got them even, just sit them on top. Don't worry about length at this stage. Sit them on top. Pinch and loop, tie them in with three or four wraps. What you do now is you make sure that the tips are in line. And I'll just tie down the butts for about three or four wraps. Take my scissors, remember to tie them in long, at least once the length of the nymph, and trim off the waist. Now come with your thumb underneath. I've got to splay these, I've got to give them a wide separation. Come with your thumb underneath and just rock in there. Now take the near tail and pull it towards you. The far tail, push it away from you. The centre tail stays in the centre. And now to consolidate those and make them stay there, I bring my tying thread between the far one and the middle one over the top and between the middle one and the near one. Do that again and again, and then I bring my tying thread underneath the middle one to raise it and part the thread. So there are your nicely splayed tails. Now we have to lead the shank. So from the usual strip of sticky back lead I take the also usual one and a half millimetre strip, cut along, nice long cuts, keep it parallel. Peel off the backing strip. Offer the lead up, sticky side down of course, just where the thread's hanging, about three or four mil up from the end wind on. When you get to just behind the head foundation strip or filament, make three wraps on the spot and then give it a pull and come down, snip off the waist Come down, but don't come with the lead as far as where you started. Finish about there. And now overlock this with your thread just to reinforce those uh, lead turns. Zoom up and down, a few cross wraps. Just cocooning the, the lead. And the carrot shape's already coming up nicely. With one or two turns on, you can get your pliers. Because this is a flat nymph, remember to start flattening it at an early stage. You don't need to bring veins out in your arm, just give it a light flattening. And now go over again with your tying thread. And any depressions you see, like at the end of the lead there, there's a step down onto the shank, which I'm going to taper off with tying thread. Just working there at the back of the shank, of the back of the lead. 
So I'm trying to produce this distinct carrot shape and remove any any depressions. And that'll do for now. Right, parking the thread near the tails. And from a piece of, I'm tying this to represent a yellow mane nymph. So from some pale yellow flexi body, take off a strip, again about one and a half mil wide. It can taper slightly or it can stay parallel, it doesn't really matter. Cut that off, peel it off the backing strip. Cut in a little tiny tag. And now tie this in. Make sure it's insecure by giving it a little tweak. And then from some yellow dyed ostrich hurl, take out one nice long plume, stroke the fibres in the opposite direction to raise the nap. Tight in at the tip end, but go, don't go right to the tip. Come up here where it's, there's a bit more strength. Tie that in. Catch down. And then tie in the waist and tweak off the tip. Now position your thread about a third of the way up, up the abdomen. What I want to do now is make this abdomen with these little feathery gills on the side. And the best way to do it is to use this nice hurl. If I just wrap the hurl round and then go over it with flexibody, I'll crush the hurl down, you won't be able to see it. If I wrap the flexibody on first and then wrap the hurl over, the first toothy trout you catch, it'll nick through that, the chances are, it'll nick through that thin hurl stalk and the hurl will come unwrapped and you've no hurled abdomen. I've come up with this method. A hook on the hackle pliers, let that hang off your little finger and then with the hurl, wrap the hurl around the flexi body. And I try to keep the spirals the same. And I don't pull too tight. I don't want to crush the flexi body sides in. I want it to stay flat. And I just wrap away. Keep going. And I, and I do about an inch to an inch and a quarter of this. Just wrap it on. And I'm just allowing it to slip through my thumb and finger of my left hand and my middle finger and ring finger of my right hand. When I get to there, I've done enough now, so I hold there, hold them both, unhook my hackle pliers and re-clip on there. So now I've got a nice piece of hurled flexi body. Rotate it till it's nice and, nice and flat, take any twists out, and now just simply wrap this on making nice, slight overlapping turns. And at each turn, I get this little rough of hurl. And you can stroke them backwards if you like. And that's going on really nice when I get to the hanging thread the thread sets your position when I get to the hanging thread see I've just just done it nice just got up there I must have done this before I lock down lock down lock down and that's tied in take my scissors and detach the waist. And then consolidate that with another two or three wraps. So now I'm ready to put the wing case in. 
For this, I'm using a nice mottled feather from a, a grouse. But you can use any feather, any dark speckled feather. It could be partridge or pheasant. What you want to do is choose one that's spoon-shaped with the stem straight. This one here, as you can see, it's got a bend in it, which is not suitable, but this one here is a straight stem, and that's just about perfect. So look for the ones that have got the straight stems. Strip off the lower fibres. And make sure that your stripping off point is equidistant. So where the fibres come to the stalk, it's equal. Like that. And now, dunk this, and I've put some head cement in a in a film canister, which gives me a nice little reservoir to dunk it in. Dunk the whole feather, lift it out, and just wipe off the excess. You get your lid back on before it evaporates. You stroke each side of the feather, and you pull the top edge, and you close it down. You pull the bottom edge and close it down. Don't just wipe like that straight along, treat each side, just draw each side down and as I draw it down I'm looking for this land shape, the cement is starting to dry and that's about, that's about the shape I'm after. The cement's dry, it's quick drying cement is this so Turn the feather now, hold the feather side, the feather side is down near the, towards the tail end, the stalk side is up towards the head end. Offer it up, central in the fly, in the abdomen, lock over with the thread, right on top of the stem, exactly where the first feather fibres slope back. Tie that in, come forward, tie the stalk down, take your scissors, Trim that off. And now for your dubbing, and I'm using a mixture of yellowish olive and a creamier olive. You can put a little admix of, of sort of a, a pale, very, very pale lime green or a very, very pale yellow, and I'll just mix that in me finger and thumb. If you want a quantity of this, you would do it in a little coffee blender. Get the three colours reasonably mixed. I'm looking for a sort of a subtle yellowish olive colour, which is a common belly colour for a lot of the heptogenids. All you need to do when you're applying dubbing is this. If you get a roughly teased out roll lag on your finger end, and you offer it up on the ball of your finger underneath the thread and bisect the amount with the thread and press you'll see that the dubbing almost folds round the, the thread to start with it's look, it's that it folds like that so I've just used the thread to press into the ball of my finger all you need to do now is bring that thumb over Drop the thumb on and roll, and roll again. That's the initial scarfing on. So that won't drop off now, but I've more work to do to it now. That's in a, a mass there. What I want to do is shred that along. So I support with me one finger, the ball of my finger, and with my thumbnail, I start moving it along and rolling it in. Shred it out, move it along. and then you can tease it backwards with the rolling motion. You can also spread it by just pulling like that, finger and thumb, finger and thumb, and just pull back. So roll that on. Try to keep your spindle tapering, thinner at that end than up here, and now you dub. So simply wind on, starting there where that wing bud is springing out. Wind forward, occasionally look on the underside, 
make sure you're leaving no gaps. It's the underside that's important. Wind on till you get at the back of the head foundation shape. And then I want a little bit more dubbing on here now. Because I'm going to, with the rest of this dubbing, I'm going to wrap this figure of eight fashion around these two stumps of nylon which stick out. And I'm going to wrap these on to produce this half disc like head shape of the heptagenids. So I dub on about so much. And now I take some head cement and I break all the laws of dubbing now I apply head cement in rough drops along along this dubbing so touch that down with head cement make it nice and moist wipe the needle and your fingers and then come onto the dubbing and roll that in. Then you want a convenient paper towel or failing that the wife's tablecloth which I'm sure she'll be pleased about. Now take the dubbing and go round those little protruding mushroom ended bits of mono. Look at the underside make sure you do the same manoeuvres on the underside and then make an elliptical movement like that you might just have to as you use up and get this filled up you might just have to steer it around that last one and then bring the tying thread back into position behind those head foundation stumps. Now with your pliers give that another flattening. And that looks okay. Look on the underside to make sure you've got this nice carrot shape. And now bring your tying thread back through the dubbing, which effectively tightens the dubbing in, and park it somewhere up from where that wing bud is. Take now some of this sort of yellowish tan round rubber and cut off a piece about an inch long. I'm going to put these legs in now, Madame X style. Position the thread just nicely forward of that wing bud, bring the rubber behind the thread, lift over and plonk it at the far side. It's what the Americans call the Madame X style. Pick up another piece, pick that up behind the thread and drop this on this side. And now come round with another two full thread wraps. Bring your tying thread forward now, about halfway along, because what I've got, a point with me bodkin, I've got back legs, and these are gonna be the middle pair, but I want them to slope backwards also like that. So what I do, I've positioned my thread where I want them, I simply, Put that leg there and trap it. If the legs are sticking forward like that, which you don't quite want, you just drop on a little bit more dubbing and just dub a little smidgen of dubbing, which makes a little collar in front. Just spin on a spindle and keep it quite tight. And then manoeuvre the leg out of place. Bring that back. Slide your dubbing up. And now dub there in front of both legs in order to keep them 
back and in place. So that's how I want both the legs to lie. Come forward now and tighten that down. And in goes the last leg. This will again go in as a pair, but with your scissors, you'll remove one of them. Put it there. Pick up another one. Lift that up, put that there. And tie down. Pull on your thread quite tightly. And then with your scissors, what I've got now is I've got four legs down each side. So you have to decide which one you're going to annex with your scissors. And I'm going to take out the backward sloping one. So I'll take out that. And that. So now I've got three legs on either side. Just remove a bit of length off them. So I'm now ready to finish the fly. Push the wing case down. Come over with the tying thread. And tie down. And again. And again. So there's a nice heart shaped, nice large heart shaped wing bud. Slide your blade under. Snip off the waist. Last operation, moisten the head capsule cover, the raffine. Push it back, keep it folded as, as a doubled piece and just fret it with your fingers down the side. Go over those eye stumps, those head foundation stumps. Keep it nice and tight. There's the eye of the hook exposed nicely. Come round now with the tying thread and make a nice, neat elliptical head. Run off some thread and come straight in there with a two finger whip finish. And three or four turns is enough because I'm going to seal over the whole of this with head cement. Pull tight. If your thread breaks, don't worry, because spiderweb usually breaks, leaving a little tag. And I can just see the tag there, snip that off. Then just lift the excess raffine up and just come along with your scissors and just carefully sever that off. Work along and carefully sever that off. And now I just look at the legs and just jockey them about if they seem a bit rakish. You can take a bit of length off. As soon as you take shorten them, they spring into another position. And what I have to do now is sit this fly in a completely different angle because I'm going to use a hot tip cauterizer. And I'm actually going to slightly melt each leg in turn with the, with the fly tipped on its head. I shall melt each leg in turn so that the, melt, the, the part beyond the point where my cauterizer hits topples over like a felled tree. So I'm now going to have to sit this fly in a vertical attitude in the vise. I now come up with the cauterizer. I'm going to take the back leg first. So I position the hot tip and just press and down it collapses. I now do the second one. And now do the front one. 
that's those three done. And start with the top one again. That's that one. That's that one. And that's that one. So now you bring the fly back into its original attitude. Put it in the correct posture in the vise. And all you have to do now is just come along each leg joint and crop off the lower leg to length about there. You can always, if you can come off, if you cut them off long, you can always make them shorter later. So don't make them too short to start with. Come round to this side and just snip those off. So it's a question of just trimming the lower leg joint. That's the heptogenic completed now. If you bothered about that little bit of white thread there, just with a fibre pen, a brown fibre pen, bluff it out. I also give a bit over the top of the head capsule. And then just seal it all over with a thin film of head cement over the entire head capsule because the raffine is quite prone to being attacked by trout's teeth. And I let it also flood over the wing bud. Let that dry. And that's it. That's going on the end of my leader. And I'm going to give Mr Trout his supper.